channel 279 and on live stream on Facebook and also on 3news.com. You can send your comments to our various social media platforms. Our handles is TV3GH. We'll start off with highlights of news making headlines today. Right, so the Parliamentary Select Committee on Health has appealed to the striking allied health professionals to call off their strike while it also ensures their concerns are met. Meanwhile, the Federation has described as false claims by the Health Minister that they have always been in constant engagement. Also tonight, government has almost concluded a new law to extend the retirement age of senior military officers by five years. Are the official person out of the 2019 medical intake five at the Ghana Military Academy in Accra, the Vice President Dr. Mahmoudou Balmia noted the new law, which is to be concluded by the end of this year, will assist in tapping the expertise of the senior officers. Tonight, the second edition of the Media General Startup Fair and Funded Summit is underway with over 90 exhibitors taking part. The fair runs from Friday to Sunday at the Kumasi Mall Car Park. And elsewhere tonight, Taiwan's parliament has become the first in Asia to legalize same-sex marriage following a vote on Friday. In 2017, the island's constitutional court ruled that same-sex couples had the right to legally marry. Parliament was given a two-year deadline and was required to pass the changes by May 24. Lawmakers debated the three different bills to legalize same-sex unions and the government's bill, the most progressive of the three, was passed. A reminder, you're watching News at 10 Live here from our news hub here at Adeksawe in Kandakra. We'll start off with a big one. All right, thank you very much for joining us here on News at 10 live from our news hub here at Adesawe in Kanda. Now, government says it will work with a consortium of banks to find an amicable solution to the alleged privatization of the four university of Ghana halls of residence. All right, so the education ministry in a statement after a meeting of authorities and student leaders of the University of Ghana said it appreciates the debt burden on the university. The statement explained the Minister of State in charge of tertiary education and Professor Kwesi Yanka met with the management of the University of Ghana and the leadership of the student body. The students have been urged to exercise restraint as steps are being taken to resolve the impasse. with a consortium of banks to help resolve the matter. Uh, let's take a listen to the head of communications of the Education Ministry, uh, Vincent Asefua, as he explains further what transpired at the meeting today. He spoke earlier on News 360. Just a few weeks ago, there were attempts or signals of demonstrations that were supposed to be happening on the campus of the University of Ghana in respect of um, the UGL hostess. Um, there was a loan that was contracted some time back and um, there was a failure, if you like, or the inability on the part of the, of the University of Ghana leadership or management to be able to um, service those loans. And for that matter, um, there was a court ruling for the University of Ghana to make payments to that effect. This was a loan that was about 43 million Ghana cities when it was contracted. Currently, as we speak, the loan has um, ballooned to about 500 million Ghana cities, which is um, scary. It has become very important for the ministry to make sure that at least um, there is some negotiations so that we would be able to solve this matter um, amicably. What exactly are you going to do? Um, currently what is being done is that um, the university management is supposed to make a payment of about 50 million Ghana cities. And an if, upfront payment. An upfront payment. And if they're able to do so, what it means is that um, the rest of the money will have to be spread, spread for the over a period of time for them to be able to pay. Um, I know that 
the University of Ghana may not be able to meet the deadline that has been given to them on the 31st of May. It's very unlikely. Uh, very, very unlikely. Mm -hmm. And so in the, in, the, in the instance that they are unable to make um, such payments, what it means is that they might have to or they may have to take over the management of the UGL host. Don't you think it's about time we relook look the whole administration of universities? We say universities are an autonomous body. Affairs. Should government every time have to step in to resolve matters such as this? You remember when the public university um, draft um, that was leaked to the Ghanaian public? Mm. Some of the questions that were asked by the media people and even Ghanaians that why is the Ministry of Education or the government interested in making sure that it has a clear cut direction, mm. how the oversight responsibility mm. will have to be, as it were, um, taken care of. Mm. People thought that the ministry was um, interested in, as uh, it were, meddling, meddling in the, right. the, but here be the case that mm. a loan is contracted by the university, probably without recourse to government, mm. but when there's a problem, it is government who's supposed to come in to make sure that such things are being um, brought to control. All right, so we're going to stay a while longer on the subject. It's one of the developing stories of the day. Sylvester Mwako is the Student Representative Council President of the University of Ghana and joins me live on the telephone lines. Sylvester, thank you very much for your time. I imagine that you were in that meeting uh, between government and university officials. Um, were you impressed with what, ha what happened? Well, I'm afraid that Sylvester is not on the phone lines. We will try and re-establish contact with the President of the University of Ghana uh, Student Representative Council. Uh, and as and when we get him on the phone lines, we'll uh, try and put a few questions to him. You're still watching News at 10 Live here from my news hub at Adesawe in Kandakra. Now, uh, we're also streaming live on Facebook. If you feel strongly about our top story for the day, you can feel free to uh, share your views and opinions with us. Uh, our handle on social media is TV3GH. We'll take a short break and return with some more stories. All right, thank you very much for joining us here on News at 10. Now, the Ghana Federation of Allied Health Professionals has described as false claims by the Minister of Health, Kweku Ajman Menu, that he's been in regular engagement with, and with uh, the Federation. Now, addressing the media in Accra, the Chairman of the Council of Presidents, Dr. Ignatius Awinibono, insisted that several attempts to meet him had proved futile and has, as a matter of urgency, called on the Minister to meet with the Federation. The group said claims by the Minister of Health that he was in regular engagement with them was false, adding the Minister's comment was either deliberate or he was misinformed. The Federation has threatened false strikes in the past and has taken the Minister of Health to the Labour Commission on several occasions and its and his current industrial action is a demonstration of bad faith towards the Minister of uh, Health and the government. We want to also clearly state that the minister sought to paint a picture that there are regular engagements and communications with the federation. He also sought to paint the picture that uh, our member who was nominated to be on the board has served more than twice on that governing board. These cannot be true. He was worried the minister had demonstrated lack of appreciation of the allied health practice. The health minister had explained the federation had threatened four strikes in the past and had taken the Ministry of Health to National Labor Commission on several occasions, but Dr. Awinubono said this was not true. There has never been even any single strike or action, industrial action in the past. These facts can be verified from every record available to the minister, the public, and at the Labor Commission. This industrial action has been our last resort to secure attention and action of the ministry after frustrating, after frustrating and failed attempts to secure appointments and receive responses to our myriad of challenges. He noted the minister was not telling the good people of Ghana the truth on the matter concerning the delay in the inauguration of the Allied Health Professions Council Governing Board. No nominee of us proposed to the board has served more than twice on the board. And these are the facts. The health profession regulatory bodies 
Act was passed by Parliament in 2012. The first substantive board was inaugurated on the 19th of June, 2015, and served barely 18 months when it was dissolved in January 2017. Meanwhile, the Parliamentary Select Committee on Health has appealed to the striking allied health professionals to call off their strike while it also ensures their concerns are met. At a meeting with leadership of a group in Parliament, ranking member on Select Committee on Health, Kwabna Minta Akando said he would impress on the health minister to meet with the group to resolve their issues. As a matter of agency, we are calling on the minister to, to, to put everything aside and meet them, to listen to them. It's very important. As politicians, we must know that we are there for the people. But as members of parliament, what we also appealed to them was that they must go back to work. Have as, they you? Yes, yes, yes. They have assured us that they are getting back to their constituents and um, with immediate effect, they will, we will hear something positively uh, from them. So we will also not disappoint them. But we think that the minister has an obligation, he has a responsibility to meet them and listen to them. Leadership of the Allied Health Professionals met with the Parliamentary Select Committee to put forward their concerns regarding the Health Professions Regulatory Act 2013. Leadership of the group said they were confident the committee would help push forward their concerns. Don't doubt what the Select Committee has told us. I trust in my heart, and he says he's going to take urgent calls. The day is still young. The day is young. Even if it's midnight, we're ready to meet the minister. We are ready, and once that happens, we would. Uh, it will give us uh, an opportunity to also meet our members. They, however, indicated their members needed to be consulted widely before the strike could be called off. Certainly, within days, we should have this resolved. I can't give you those definite answers because I would not want to disappoint you. It is a teamwork. And you will notice that the federation is uh, a federation of multiple professions. And it is a strong federation that is um, made up of variety. We need to get people from all over. Presidents live across the various regions. We need to get them down also. If it's an emergency meeting over the weekend, Together, we can take a decision on this. In other news, former Deputy Interior Minister James Agalga has rubbished allegations by the NPP government that the Eswal Mahama administration, under his supervision, ordered the importation of some 1,575 firearms. At a news conference yesterday, Information Minister Kojo Ponkuma indicated that Mr. Agalga personally signed the authorization note for the arms to be shipped into the country. There's more in the following Newsdex report. Information Minister Kujo Pong Kroma at a news conference on Thursday told journalists that they have evidence that the previous administration granted the license for the importation of the huge cache of firearms. He explained that a permit was issued on 5th January 2017, two days to the handing over to the next government. Kujo Pong Kroma wondered why the NDC would then turn around to accuse the Kufuadu administration of engaging in an action that threatens the country's security. But responding to the allegations, James Agalga, who is also MP for Bilsa North, said the information minister did not tell the entire truth. The letter I wrote in January 2017 was addressed to the Director General of the Criminal Investigations Department. And if you read the concluding two lines of that letter, you would find that um, we had stated categorically that it was an authorization for an import permit to issue. Now, Honorable Kojo Opong Okroma did not tell the press when the import permit itself was issued. 
James Agalga also rubbished concerns by the information minister that he breached some agreements reached during the transition period. I don't know about that. What I can tell you is that the signed letter was an act that I undertook as part of my mandate. Was it in the know by the transition team? I was not a member of the transition team. It is imagined that the Ministry of Interior gave approval for the importation of short hunting guns into the country by MS Yatko Ghana Limited in January 2018. A letter from the ministry addressed to the Director General of the CID on January 2, 2018, made reference to an earlier letter on the same permit. The document signed by Adli Danokumi, Chief Director for the Ministry of Interior on behalf of the minister, said permission was granted to MS Yatko Ghana Limited to take delivery of the shotguns from the Tema port. The letter noted that the company had been given permit to import 4,000 shotguns per letter dated 5th January 2017. The letter copied to the National Security Coordinator and the Customs Division of the GRA further stated that the permit does not require authorization of ECOWAS. You're still watching News at 10 Live from Adisa in Kandakra. We'll take a short break. You're welcome back to News at 10. Now, former chairman of the New Patriotic Party and 2016 campaign manager of the party, Peter McMenu, is advocating a change in the time of close of national polls from 5 p.m. to 2 p.m. His suggestion comes on the back of Nigeria's closing polls at 2 p.m. to allow ample time for counting and declaration of results at polling stations. An election for Africa's most populous nation had been marred with violence in some areas. Notorious for postponement of elections, Nigeria's election has become an eyeball drawer for many on the continent. At a CDD roundtable discussions to draw lessons from the recent Nigerian elections, the delays in releasing results after voting was a subject for discussion. When you close your polls, it's also critical. But we live in an era of power failures. Why do Ghana wait till 5 p.m. before we close our polls? I think in Nigeria it's two. But if the law says the, 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 the polls close at two, people will come and queue. And by two you are done, you start uh, doing your counting, collation, etc. I think it's also something uh, we can learn from Nigeria. Ghana's position on its citizens abroad voting came under scrutiny as the lead discussant and executive director for the Youth Initiative for Advocacy, Growth and Advancement, Yaga Africa, Samson Itodu, called for caution. Um, there are high commissions and embassies across, across the world. Um, they can also, um, elections can be conducted in those, in those, um, in those, in the high commissions or embassies across the world. Um, political parties um, have different um, units in different parts of the world. They can actually deploy observers and monitors to go watch those, those elections, get the results, and those results can actually be transmitted electronically. Although you can subject them to certain checks before they are tallied with the country level um, results. Both Yaga and the CDD are of the firm believe Ghana would draw positive lessons from Nigeria's elections. There's one thing that um, Ghana should not um, make the mistake is not effectively managing election logistics. It's at the heart of elections because elections are simply about logistics. Other panelists who were in Nigeria for the elections urged the EC not to commit the same mistake Nigeria's INEC committed. The one thing that the Nigerian 2019 election did, which was an upgrade of 2015, was the development of their internally dis uh, displaced persons voting framework, which Ghana have to start looking at because we always don't talk about the internally displaced persons in our country. But there are so many people that are being displaced. We need to look at how much confidence 
we as a people can repose in the EC. They need it, irrespective of who, whoever is the one in charge of it. It is a state institution, and its independence is very, very key. And that independence can only happen if we ourselves repose the confidence in them. And the decisions they equally must take must be in the interest of the people. All right, that's how we conclude uh, news at 10. It came to you live from our studios here at Adesawe in Kandakra. Thanks very much for watching. For more news, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com. Now, for those of you in Kumasi, do well to pass by the Media General uh, Startup Fair uh, and Summit. It's going through for, from tomorrow till Sunday, eventually when it ends. And then also tomorrow is the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. Uh, you've got to be there because I'm going to be there as well. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and your weekend as well. We'll see you same time. Bye-bye.